Hello, this is Ben, and I'm making a video to talk about some of the new features which I've put into the pattern strings. Some features are a little bit less self-explanatory, like the record feature, so um, I thought it'd be good to just kind of walk how walk through how that works. So first off, we've got the tempo sync option here, which um, is kind of handy. Let's say you were going at like 50 BPM, with that tempo, things are going to be stretched like this. So it's a little bit artifacty, and also the vibrato gets slowed down, so it's like wah, 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 wah. So now you can just make up for that by making it twice as fast. And vice versa. Okay, here are the release samples. Without them. And if you stop the note in various places, it can sound better or worse. See, it sounds a bit patched together, but no matter where you stop the note, how you release the samples, if you turn up the reverb, that usually covers things up. See, now it's pretty smooth. Let's try that with a chord. How about, um, how about, how about that? Oh, it's out of range. So yeah, um, sounds a bit patched together that way, but if you maybe make it this length, yeah, that works better. Or this length, yeah, also works better. And then without, again, yeah, it's a bit abrupt. Let's hear that with the violin as well. Hmm, let's make this a seventh chord. Yeah, okay, so let's add the release samples back in. There we go. How about with no reverb so you can hear? Yeah, it sounds really bad without reverb. There's also different, um, there's different dynamic layers and round robins for the release samples. So that's, that's kind of nice. Next, the hidden feature, which if I didn't make this video, people might, you might not even notice. Um, if you click and drag on either side of any of the pattern tiles, then you can control their envelopes just a little bit. It's not like a super drastic control, but it's just enough to make it so you can add some extra variation and shaping to the rhythm. What does that sound like? Um, I'll just do like a simple, something like this. Kind of helps fade things out. Something that's kind of interesting I discovered is with that extra space you've added, you could do you could do something like this. So, oh wait, how did I do this? Oh yeah, um, uh, yeah. So if you went like this on these, and then had all these like this, and then you had one of these up an octave. It's kind of a neat effect, especially with the lost reverb. Yeah, I really like how that, um, how that works. And then um, uh, let's try with the bottom pattern up an octave. Yeah, it creates a really interesting direction. Let's listen without the envelopes. Cool texture. 
I'm getting kind of tired of this chord. Let's maybe do some kind of progression. Oh yeah, okay, we're out of range of... Whoops, I don't know where this is going. Oh gosh, yeah, that was not a good idea. See, this is why working in MIDI sometimes is not as good as just sitting at a keyboard, but oh well. You know what? I'm just going to get rid of this MIDI clip and just start over. Let's do that. It's a plain old C minor, C minor chord. So let's say you had that C minor chord playing this rhythm. And then you had the bass take out the A pattern, so the bass is only playing this rhythm. Bring out the bottom, I might turn the bass up a bit. Yeah, that's nice. And then you could pan the instruments apart as well. That's kind of dramatic. And if both instruments were playing both patterns, it would sound like this. It's a bit more full. But it's nice to be able to, you know, subtract things, you know, start with a lot and just start taking things out and seeing. Okay, again, I'm getting really tired of this chord. Let's do something else. Okay, at least we'll have two chords to go between now. Yeah, so that's kind of fun. Um, I should show this with multiple... Um, with longer rhythms as well. So, how about something like this? And we'll we'll stick with the bass and cello. Oh, that makes me want to do this chord. And go back to G, or go back to whatever this was. Yeah. Ah, there's a nice little loop there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, now that you have all this stuff in place, you could try switching things around. So what if the cello was on bottom and the bass was on top? So for you know orchestration, it's it's really interesting. stuff. The thing that took me the most time and um, <laughs> it was kind of a cool idea until I realized how incredibly complicated it was going to be to make it work. But um, so here's what you do. Let's say you have your pattern and let's just do this with all the instruments. Um, okay, so you've got your pattern and you make some kind of chord progression, like um, if you hit record and then play the pattern into contact. Now you can see it's loading stuff and it turned on the multi-channel input button, which is important. So now if you click and drag on the export MIDI, you can drop the MIDI files into here. And this is, um, this is all the parts, all of the instruments and patterns split apart. Yeah, and it's organized from top to bottom. So this MIDI is violin pattern one, so it's violin pattern two, viola pattern one, viola pattern two, 
cello pattern one, cello pattern two, bass pattern one, bass pattern two. So um, the MIDI channel that each of these MIDI clips is using is determining which instruments samples are getting played. And you might be wondering, how is it knowing which of the rhythms to play when? And the way it's doing that is it's using the velocity. You can see the velocities down here are all these different funny values. And um, just to demonstrate, um, if you change one of the values, it changes which rhythm gets played. So for instance, this note happens to be velocity one. If you set it to velocity two, you can see it's that rhythm. If you set it to three, it's that rhythm. Set it to like 10 or something. And um, yeah, so I programmed contacts to, um, when you hit record, to write all of the proper notes and velocities and channels so that it would split everything apart like this. And once you've exported it here, you can now go in and just rearrange the orders of the notes to, um, in order to like change how you're orchestrating things. So now, um, if you wanted to have the violas like only playing some notes. You could just kind of subtractively start taking stuff out and seeing what it sounds like. Um, I don't know, this is gonna sound kind of random, but I don't know, maybe there'll be some interesting stuff in here. Let's just see what it sounds like now. Nah, it doesn't sound like different actually. Yeah, maybe I'll take more outs. Like, how about this? If I pan the instruments around. Yeah. The other thing you could do is now um, like change the octaves of things. Instead of having to use just these octave switches, you can just do whatever you want with the MIDI. So maybe you could make the basses be down an octave. So the idea is that these pattern blocks um, are a nice visual tool, but um, you have to use like key switches and stuff or like different instances of the pattern strings and it can get kind of complicated that way. So if you um, record something that you like into here, then export it as MIDI, then you can just use the MIDI clips that get exported as the building blocks. And of course, you can't really see which note is triggering which rhythm once you export it, but um, as long as you just kind of, I don't know, maybe you could name them or something and just sort of remember which thing is which and um, just use these as building blocks instead of using the building blocks in here. It's all about blocks, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, well, this has been a huge, huge project, really a huge headache, but I'm sure my newfound skill in scripting will come in useful for other instruments. So um, yeah, thanks for uh, watching this and see you later. Bye.